Welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about using Scream 4. So let's go ahead and get started with this. For simplicity's sake, I have just brought in a Dr. Octo Rex and um, I'm using a, a loop here. And then I'll go over to Effects and let's go ahead and drag in a screen. Reason will then automatically route those, route the screen with the Dr. Octo. Um, so the screen for is a distortion effect device, um, and you can use it to create subtle or extreme processing uh, or effects, you know, to your uh, sounds. And it's most often used as an insert effect, and it also is stereo in and out. Um, down here, you can see we've got the stereo out of our Dr. Octorex going in and stereo out. So the Scream 4 can be broken into three main sections. Uh, you've got the damage section here to the left, uh, which has 10 different algorithms to choose from for distortion and destruction, as well as a damage control knob, and two dials down at the bottom for adjusting different parameters based on which of the algorithms that you have selected here up top. The cut section, uh, this allows you to adjust the tone of the audio that you're processing. And the body section uh, essentially puts your audio in a resonance body. And this allows you to create different effects like uh, speaker cabinet simulations and Ottawa type effects. So let's talk about the damage section uh, a bit further here. In order to activate this section, you do need to, and actually I'm going to just right click on the screen and reset the device so that we can just start from scratch here. So in the damage section, you'll note in the upper left hand corner, there's a LED here, a yellow LED, and clicking that will turn on and off the damage section. You also have a damage control here. The dial, uh, this adjusts the level of the dry audio uh, that's going into Scream and allowing you to control. This allows you to control how much processing or damage you uh, are actually going to have on your dry signal. So I'm going to turn this all the way down and press the space bar to start, start our loop playback and just take a look at how uh, using this dial will affect uh, the dry audio. Okay, so it's it's essentially a level control for the input, the audio that's coming in, but just know that however high or low you have the set, it will then affect the amount of whatever effects you're using and distortion that you're applying here. And so moving on, there are 10 different algorithms that you can choose from here, and I won't go into describing each one because we'd be here for a while. But we can just let's take a look at a couple of them here because I'd like to show how these two dials uh, they are context sensitive. So de de depending on which algorithm you have selected, these are going to do different things. And just you can refer to the Reason manual to find out exactly um, how they change with each um, algorithm that you're working with. But we're going to cover two of them here just so you have an idea. So we'll start with the overdrive. And overdrive creates an analog type overdrive effect. Um, so when we have this selected and you select the different algorithms by using this dial, you click and hold and just drag your mouse up. You can also click on the lead or the name as well. So let's go back up to the overdrive. And when we are working with the overdrive, the parameter one knob, this controls the basic tone of the effect. 
So the higher we go, if, if we turn it clockwise, this is going to introduce a brighter sound. Um, and parameter 2, this controls the presence, which boosts frequencies in the upper range. And it does this before the distortion stage. So that's going to affect how your distortion sounds when you um, adjust this parameter 2 knob. So turning clockwise uh, will bring more presence. It will boost the presence. So let's just take a look at that real quick. I'm going to turn our level down here a bit. So again, parameter 1 controls the basic tone of the effect. So as we go up, it should get brighter. And parameter 2 controls the presence, which boosts I'm going to turn parameter 1 down actually a bit. So parameter 2 uh, boosts frequencies in the upper range before the distortion happens. So let's see how that sounds as we move up. Okay, and just to show a uh, different example of how these uh, dials will change uh, depending on what you're using here, if we choose digital down at the bottom, this creates a lo-fi effect on the audio that you're working with. And when we have digital selected, parameter 1 controls the resolution or bit depth. So all the way to the right, um, there's no bit reduction and all the way to the left that would be one bit. So let's start off all the way to the right there. And parameter two controls the sample rate. And as with parameter one, fully to the right, there is no reduction uh, to the sample rate and turning to the left gradually decreases. So let's then take a quick listen to uh, these in action. So we'll start with parameter 1, which is the bit depth. And let's take a look, listen to the sample rate. We'll come down. Okay, this is like Atari or something. Um, okay, and so that's the damage section, and we'll go ahead and deactivate that by clicking the lead. Now with uh, cut, um, you know, this just allows you to control the tone of the audio, as we mentioned. Uh, so we'll play back. You can turn it on by clicking the LED here. And there's 18 decibels of cut or boost for each of these low, mid, and high. Okay, uh, fairly straightforward there. Uh, lastly, we have the body section. Uh, the body section places the audio in a resonant body, and um, as with the other two sections, you activate it by clicking the lead here. Um, you have five different body types that you can choose from with this dial here, and you just click and hold and drag up to choose between each one, A through E. And then you have three different dials to the left of this type uh, knob that um, you can use to tweak even further your audio. Um, so the resonance knob gives a more resonant effect 
as you turn it up. So we'll just go ahead and turn that down for now for when we uh, go into sampling this. The scale controls the size of the body. Um, and this, actually, this dial is actually inverted, so um, we're going to set that to all the way to the right to start off with. And auto sets the amount of envelope follower effect on the scale parameter on this one here. Um, and so the level of your incoming audio will affect this auto dial. And so the best way would be to just go ahead and play this back and see how that works. We'll start with the resonance though. Oh, well damage is turned off so that's why that's not. Um, I'll turn up the volume on the Dr. Octo Rex. So you can see clearly, or hear clearly, how the resonance changes as we adjust that dial. And again, the scale controls the size of the body. And this would be a nice one to automate. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of ideas about automating automation with this one. But you can automate any of them. So, uh, and so with auto, you can kind of hear the pitch changing there. And as I was saying. This is dependent on the input level. So let's turn this up a bit more, even. And actually, I'm going to turn the damage on so we can hear that a little bit better. You see that effect just becomes more pronounced. Okay, uh, here's B. Andy. Okay, and so I think we'll stop here. Hope you gained something useful uh, out of the video, and I'll see you next time.